you know, you mentioned something that really kind of falls into what we were talking about earlier. And that's, um, you know, a correction. We talk about what's going to happen. Things tend to be cooling off a little bit. And you, you brought up that, you know, 08 set you back just like it did everybody else. What, how is it that it set you back? And and what what I'm trying to to do is to let people know that you don't need to have fear with the change in the market. So, so like, what's the worst thing that happened and, and how'd you come through it? Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the things I, you know, it was definitely a painful time that I had to work through uh, a lot of things. But one of the greatest teachers or lessons that came through that kind of baptism of fire was to be much more strategic, you know, because one of the things that I saw as we went through that time period is that the truth is our our buy and hold uh, properties, our, our apartment communities and our single family rentals, they lacked really a quality strategy in terms of like, you know, in Florida, you just get what you get and don't throw a fit at that time. Right. Cause it's like, <laughs> you know, the market's so hot. Mm-hmm. And so where we would buy an apartment complex in a D area because it was a deal. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, like what happened in that area. And again, I mean, D area by like, you know, there's hookers walking down us 19 and <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, you know, it, it's definitely, a gentrifying area, right? Like, it's, <laughs> no, it was, it was like rough. Um, but, you know, it was a deal, right? And so, again, we fixed it up, made it better. But, like, when that collapse happened, good Lord, rents went from like 550 to 275 there, like in a matter of months. You know, mm-hmm. there was other factors that happened, like all these neighborhoods went vacant on foreclosure. And so people could move up into better, you know, housing stock. But the thing that I learned, is that, you know, we didn't really have enough quality mitigation in in our strategy when we're buying those things before. And so that forced us to have to work through that, which we were able to successfully do. And, you know, none of our investors and our private investors over 18 years never lost capital, always made a double digit return. I mean, I got my face punched in for sure. But (laughs) and it was very difficult to have to work through that year over year over year to get where, you know, we could, and thankfully with cash flow, you can work through things and then be able to exit in better times. And so, you know, but I think what you said is a very paramount thing. You don't need to fear the uncertainty of the future or the possibility or inevitability of a market downturn or slowdown. You just need to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And have that to be thoughtful in your execution. You know, I think a lot of times people just probably run and gun and they may not be thinking and or developing things with a strategy in place that factors in those risks. Right. Especially the people who weren't around in 2008. Yeah. Everything just goes up. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the sting. And every deal that I do, I remember the sting. Yeah, no, um, you sure. gotta you gotta have that in the back of your mind, and I love what you said. You need to be more strategic in what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, as an example of that, uh, hope not too long, but like we looked at a community in one of our main areas in Atlanta, great potential deal, but it's in a it's in a little uh, cul-de-sac community, and there's you know one property there, one property there, and then the subject property there, and mm-hmm. The two other properties were run by crappy landlords, not real good, you know, had disquality people living there. This property had potential, but it also suffered during the previous downturn. And then now when you look at that, you've got two other crappy landlords right here that are going to have not good people in it. And then now you go into a downturn, you've got subquality people living right there. It's going to drag you down. Uh, from your performance. So even though it looked good on paper, we knew all those little nuances and details. We said, we'll pass on that deal. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a thing that, you know, people sometimes don't know because they don't have the strategic element. They haven't been through the pain. Right. Or then they don't know actually the market itself to be able to have those nuances. They just think, oh, it's a great deal and let's do it. You know, whether it's right. a house or you know, uh, multifamily property too. Right. Well said. Well said. 